right, welcome everyone to another beautiful day on the North Fork of the Malheur River. We're here today to show you how to conduct a Woolman pebble count. So what we are initially doing is we are looking for a location in our stream in a fast water unit that has typical looking substrate in which you have been seeing through your survey. So here we have found a nice long fast water unit in which we found that the substrate looks pretty similar to what we had been seeing throughout our survey. And don't forget, we're gonna be doing two Woolmans per reach. So this is our first Woolman in our first reach. And so what we do is we have our data sheet here and we already filled out our header for our state, county, forest, stream name. We'll have to get our hut code and quad later. But then we also added a location for a GPS point. Since this is our first reach and our first Woolman, we did North Fork Malheur R1W1 to show that it's reach one, Woolman one. So what we see here on our data sheet is we have multiple columns for different size classes of particulates. And what you will notice is there is a range in each size class. And all we are concerned about when we collect data is the larger number in this range as our gravelometer, which we have over here, has all the associated numbers. The, the taller number is the one that we are reading off of this, this gravelometer. If the rock is fitting through the opening, then it is smaller than that size. So every time the observer reads a number, the recorder is going to look for the number on the right hand side in this millimeters column and then create a tally right next to that in the particle count. All right, so first of all, what we need to do after we found our location and our fast water unit that we find acceptable is we need to identify our bank full location. And what we did here is we put in some stakes for you guys with some flagging to signify where our bank full is. It's pretty low on this system, so you see we're pretty close to our wetted edge. And what we want to do with our woman is we need to do a transect. And we want to do our transect from one bank full and end at the other bank full across the other side of the street. And while we do our transect, we'll be taking multiple samples along the transect. We want to make sure where we take these samples are in even intervals as we go across. And the best way to do this is to go te heel to toe for your sample. And then you're gonna to wanna to take your sample blindly off of your toe. So our first sample is always gonna start right at our bank full location. And the first sample, we're actually gonna do our heel and our toe as we're signifying that our heel is behind the bank full slot spot as well. So we're gonna do one sample here and one sample in front. And this is a good example of what you're gonna see a lot at your bank full level. You're gonna find a lot of vegetation which is just gonna have a very fine particulates underneath it. So if you see when it comes up, it looks like a silty mud. That we are not going to try to put through our gravelometer. We are just going to tell, we know it's smaller than the two millimeter size glass. It's very small particulate. So we're going to tell our observer that we have a sand size. So we have a column that's less than two millimeters and it says SCS, that's sand, silt, and clay is what we're looking is what those signify. So we have, we just got one on our heel and one on our toe. So we're recording two dots to signify two samples already taken. And so at this point, what we're going to do is in order to keep our transect samples even, we'll just continue to go heel toe, heel toe, while we try to keep our transect straight. So we want to fixate on an object across the stream for us to shoot our transect so our transect does not curve. Luckily for us with our stakes, we're kind of cheating so we can just go right from stake to stake in this situation. And what we are trying to do is we are trying to collect a hundred pebbles. So it is important to try to do as many samples as you can across your transect. And you can actually do your transects at different angles. You can go upstream or downstream. As long as you're not doing transects over, right over the top of each other, it's okay if they cross. In this situation, we're just going to give an example of one transect for now. So we had our first two samples. We went up and now we're gonna do our third sample right off the toe. And it's important not to look at what you're picking up your eyes will generally always go to the largest rock. So you just don't want to look at what you're actually touching. And then you'll pull up the first thing, the very first thing your finger hits is what you want to sample. As you see, we're looking at a very fine material again. So we will tell our recorder another sand and we will put that in the sand particulate count. Excellent. And now we are going to actually start getting into the, the water itself. And the biggest thing here is always to think about safety when you're doing this. So every time you do a step, always take your other foot and put it out to the side so you're stable, so you're not trying to balance in a line. That is just very hard to do. And so in this situation, we're actually dropping off the edge. So we're going to have to just reach down to the first thing we can find. And we're going to pick that rock up. Oh, we got something bigger this time. Excellent. 
Here's our larger rock. Oh, we got some nice stone fly casings. Excellent. And then we're going to find the smallest opening in which we can get this to fit through. Obviously not going through 90. So we're going to go to the next size up. We got 128 up here. Let's see. Oh, definitely. And what we want to make sure we do is after we pass our rock through this size, we want to set it off to the side. We don't want to come back and sample that rock again. Perfect. Get that out of here. So, and then our observer will re report to our recorder what size we just measured. 128. Perfect. We're going to come over here and we're going to find the 128 on the right side, the biggest number, and she's going to make a dot to signify one sample. Perfect. All right, let's do another one. So again, she's going to be doing heel toe, heel toe throughout this whole survey. And we can even see this. It's kind of can be challenging. It's a little slippery substrate, so always just make sure you have excellent footing while we're doing this. And it's always going to be the first First thing your finger touches as you're going over the toe. Perfect, here we go. We got another sample. We're gonna look for the smallest box we can get it through. Not 11, 16. And this will be also recorded to our, reported to our recorder. And then we will get that out of the way. So what happens sometimes is you find yourself up against a very large rock in which you cannot, it's actually in, embedded into the stream so it's not able to be picked up. You can't actually get it to pick it up at all because it's so embedded. So what we need to do is since we are doing our pebble count based on the intermediate access, we need to find that intermediate access as best we can with that embedded rock. So generally what we find is our, our really skinny access is generally the height of the rock, basically from the stream bed up to the top of the rock. Our long access tends to be in line with our stream flow and then what happens is our intermediate access tends to be perpendicular to our stream flow. And so what we're going to do is we have, luckily with our nifty gravelometer on the top here, we actually have millimeter in just a ruler type measurement. So what we'll do is we'll actually use those measurements to measure the rock and we'll use our hands. Basically we'll find one edge of the rock, we'll hold it right at zero, and then we'll put our hand at the other edge of the rock and wherever that lay lies on our ruler here is how wide the, the, uh, the millimeters are of that rock and which can be reported and then your observer can, or your recorder can actually find the size class in which that'll fit into. You'll find in some cases that your rock will be over 300, in which case you just want to double this over. So basically you'll put your zero where your 300 was, you know, keep an eye on where that mark was and continue to measure over and can get your entire width of that rock. It can, they can definitely go larger than 300. So here we're going to try to get underneath the water here and show you folks what this kind of looks like with your hands underneath the water. There's our flat foot at our bankful. Oh, All right, and there 
we have completed one transect from our other bank fold pin across the stream and we came straight across to our other bank fold pin here. Now we have completed the transect, so as you see here, we've got ourselves our sample unit and then we have a column up, up, up here for number of transects. So we'll go ahead and put a tally in that to signify we just did one transect. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we'll total up how many samples of particles we have and figure out if we're close to 100 or not. We can tell by looking at those numbers right now, we're probably not there. We know we're going to have to do at least one more transect but we can total them to get an idea of how many samples we got per transect and understand if we want to shorten our interval for our next transect to get more samples. Um, you can go, instead of going heel toe, you can go toe to arch to make a, basically get double the samples in the same transect line. If you also find yourself finishing, getting very close, you finish a transect and you say you're at 90, you can also in elongate your transects and do full steps across the stream to get less samples. As long as each transect has the same sampling distance per per sample location they can be however far apart or as close together as you want to make them as long as each time you're doing a sample you are consistently making the same distance across your transect and each you have identified and there's an example of a large step this would average probably on this wet width of a stream probably about eight to ten samples per transect versus our heel to toe which gave us probably closer to 30 transects and as you can see this can be a bit precarious when you're going with large steps so don't be afraid to have a waiting rod with you all right we're at another unique situa situation with our woman pebble count we have come across a very large boulder in at the end of our transect and so here we're going to have to again identify our intermediate access so with this rock, this boulder is actually positioned a little bit differently than we would normally typically see. So this, our long axis is going this way, and then our skinny axis is still going to be the height. So from the bottom of the stream bed to the top of here, but what we're looking at is the intermediate. So the intermediate is actually parallel with the flow in this rock, it's probably because of the way it's pinched up against the bank here. So we're going to measure across this, this axis to get our actual measurement. So we're going to find the edge, and we're going to get our zero. And then we're going to mark our 300. We're going to go again. So now we're at 600 at that mark. And then we're going to go again and figure out where the end of it is. We'll use our hands. We're at six. And then we're going to add. Looks like about uh, we're at 250 there. So six plus 250, we're at 850. So then we're going to put 850 down on our on our data sheet. And then the other question now we have is like, oh wow, this is a big rock. So our next, our next actual interval, we had our first interval hit in the front of the rock. Our next interval, even though we're taking bigger steps, is going to probably end up near the top of the rock, and that is okay. We'll just put another 850 tally down. We are when you hit, run into large substrate and your interval hits it multiple times across it, you can record that exact same piece of substrate multiple times on your data sheet. That is totally acceptable. Okay, now we have officially finished our last transect. So as you can see, we've got a handful of tallies throughout our entire data sheet. And then we went through at the very end and we actually totaled all these up. And we actually went a little over with our sample set. So we got 131 samples, definitely over our minimum of 100. We tend to try to shoot for just over 100 if we can, but over, more is not going to hurt anything. And then we'll notice up here we had a couple more transects to finish out so we have four dots here to signify we had four transects the next thing we're going to introduce to you guys is gradient you can see we have a box here to fill out gradient in our next video we'll go through exactly how to shoot a proper gradient for your stream